Hello everybody, we're actually doing a OBS show, studio show, see how it goes for Cindy, she's been recovering, she's done the um, what's up, conversations on the Migrant Caravan, those are excellent shows, information that you don't get anywhere else, she's doing those from her phone because it's been difficult for her to be in front of these studio lights, we'll see how it goes tonight, she's got a good show planned for you. Some pretty current information. Leroy Nexus. So, learn about Nexus. I guess we're going to have a little schooling tonight. We're going to get a few people to catch on here. Get on, catch on. And uh, we'll be here with you shortly. I'm just going to run some music. We're going to run some music and we're going to just ease into it. Invite your friends, share this out. It's going to be a good show, and thank you for watching and for joining. We really appreciate it. Seconds, is that good with you, Cindy? We're gonna get the show on the road. So hold on to your hats. Here we go. Welcome, everyone, to uh, Mexican Crossing Lines with your hosts, Cindy Gomez-Shemp. And Duke Gomez-Shemp. You're listening to 88.1 FM, KPPPLP, Fargo-Moorhead, where we are adding local color to your airwaves. Tonight, I'm going to do a deep dive on a group called Nexus Libre by Nexus. Uh, parent company of Libre by Nexus is services nexus family of companies nexus services and um, the company has been investigated for questionable business practices people are um, very upset about the way in which they are taking advantage of the crisis that uh, we are experiencing at our southern border with mass migration from the caravans since roughly 2017 coming forward. And what I have been doing in my uh, WhatsApp chat readings and translations is uh, highlighting some of the uh, extortion, the fraud, the harassment, um, that is experienced by the people that are in the caravan. I believe that the uh, entities that are preying upon the vulnerable, misinformed people within these caravans are doing so because this is a billion dollar industry. It continues to have money flowing uh, to smuggling operations two crooked lawyers groups, two crooked NGOs, and anyone who is willing to make a buck, including the cartels, the gangs, and, and, and anyone that, that can make money off of the migrants that are uh, traveling by the hundreds of thousands. Trying to reach the United States in search of better work, 
uh, in search of the American dream, in search of an education for their children, a future for their families back home. Uh, but ultimately what they are doing in order to try to achieve that dream now is requesting asylum. The asylum process is very difficult. Less than 10% of people qualify, meet all of the requirements of evidence under the law to apply for and be granted asylum. And now, because of the third party, the third safe party, uh, third safe country, excuse me, mm -hmm. third safe country agreement between the United States, Mexico, Guatemala, Central America, all of Central America, people traveling to the United States to seek asylum will be barred, can be barred, because they didn't first seek asylum in one of the countries they passed along the way. So... With all of that in mind, I want to thank everyone for um, the support that you have given to our programming, to our station. And I want to invite you to um, support us financially with a tax-deductible donation and follow us on our social media sites. How can folks do that? Well, there's many ways. Uh, you're actually watching us on, on um, Facebook. And uh, we also have a uh, YouTube channel. You're watching right now on Facebook at uh, FM uh, 88.1 FM. We also have Mexi Dash Can and the People's Press Project for Facebook uh, pages. We uh, have a YouTube channel. It's actually under my name, Duke1517. And that's where we do our live streams on um, YouTube. We also uh, do some, uh, you know, upload all of, all of these shows that we do on Facebook. We upload those to YouTube also, and we put them on our webpage at kppfm.com. Uh, if you go to kppfm.com, you can see all of our programs uh, from years ago. I mean, they go way back before we were even doing live streams. We were just doing uh, straight radio shows and podcasts. You can find those under a Mexican Crossing Line or podcasts, and we have some other material on there all the way back to be way before Standing Rock when we first started this radio station. We are a nonprofit, non-commercial radio station in Fargo-Moorhead. We live stream and have an audience across Across this country and internationally, we have a, a, a listening audience here in the Fargo-Moorhead region of uh, up to 165, 200,000 people potential. Uh, we broadcast here every day, 24 hours a day. Many of these programs end up on KP uh, on our um, radio station. Some don't, you know. Some we can't edit down to how they fit in, but um, most of them are. And also, you can also find them at kppfm.com. Cindy mentioned that uh, if. Uh, you should, if you'd like to support us, support our work, support our programming, go to kppfm.com slash donate. You can also find us on uh, Twitter at media underscore PPP. You can email Cindy at kppfm.com or me, Duke, at kppfm.com. Yes, and let's dive right in because this information is um, pretty interesting. Um. There's a lot of um, fear-mongering that goes on in this, well, I guess it is an industry. Yeah. Smuggling, yeah. mass migration, bringing people here, um, making money off of them, their, their immigration claims. Uh, and also, um, now we're going to look into this Libre by Nexus, the bails, the bails bondsmen oh. that take them out of those situations and how they're making bank off of the misery of these folks. If you recall, uh, during one of my recent what's up chat shows, I think it was actually the last one I did. I shared a video with you from a news story in which it shows a migrant that used Nexus by Libre, like many hundreds of thousands of people have, have done in order to get out of uh, um, jail, basically detention. And what it said is that the average that people have to pay to bond out of detention is, you know, seven to $10,000. And most people can't pay that. And nobody can have an undocumented person pay their bond to get out. And if you have someone pay your bond to get out 
and it isn't a surety company or a middleman like Nexus Services or as they're otherwise known, Libre by Nexus, you have to pay the full amount. You can't just pay a percentage of the amount in order to get out. So with all of that, it pretty much makes it a likelihood that people going into detention facilities, and that is 99% of asylum seekers because they're just crossing the border and turning themselves into the authorities, will not be able to bond out which would result in people having to stay in a detention facility anywhere from a year to two to three, even five. The average wait for a a resolution on an asylum claim at this point is two to five years. Wow. So what that means is that for people to get out, they need to use almost exclusively services like Libre by Nexus in order to get out and the contracts that they're signing, the agreements that they're signing are basically putting these folks into a form of indentured servitude. Now, this is just my opinion, but when someone like the woman, Cindy from El Salvador that I showed in my video Uh, has to pay a $12,000 bond, and in addition to that, has to sign a contract with a surety company like Nexus, Libre by Nexus, which requires them to pay an activation fee of 400 and some dollars, to pay for the um, ankle bracelet rental monthly, which is another 400 and some dollars, and to do so until their claim is resolved, which could be, you know, an average of 30 some months, you're talking about paying more to the surety company for the rental and use of an ankle bracelet over the period of time you have to wait for your asylum hearing, which is higher than the original bond if she had had the money to pay for the whole thing. And what this boils down to is what that migrant said, having realized what the consequences of bailing out of detention meant. And she said, I regret coming here. Mm -hmm. A thousand times over, I regret it. Why? Because nobody told these folks the truth. The same con artivists and so-called human rights defenders that are working with the crooked lawyers groups like Al Otro Lado, and many others, the politicians that are at the border of Matamoros demanding entry for the vulnerable people stuck at the border, the people that are advising folks in Central America, throughout Mexico, through NGOs and other nonprofit American groups that they have a right to seek asylum <clears throat> are not giving people all of the information they need. In fact, the information they're giving them is so misleading that many of the people, the small percentage of those, especially now with this third safe country agreement, that will actually get to stay in the United States and bail out of detention uh, facilities to await an asylum hearing However small that percentage of people is, it is very likely that those people are going to be bled dry. And many of them will feel just like Cindy from El Salvador did, that they regret it deeply and that they wish they had just stayed at home. And I think that's important because I don't think that people are making choices, real choices, when they lack the information that groups like Libre by Nexus and many others exploiting this situation of mass migration are failing to tell immigrants coming to this country. Well, of course they're not going to tell them because they got a scam going on. I mean, this, this is like, none of these people want uh, immigration reform. They don't want a better immigration system because they can, they can cash in and, and keep on cashing in because of look at all the thousands of people they're going to have as clients. You know, it, it's um, and that doesn't even 
We're not even talking about where they go, the detention facilities that are springing up all over the country, privately owned, because they're going to cash in, too. They want this to keep on going, so they're going to continue to mislead people, and they're going to have all these naive people in these situations that they'll never get out of, basically. Exactly. So today, I am going to uh, do a little bit of a deeper dive on how Libre by Nexus operates, and you can draw your own conclusions about whether or not you think the process is fair. Whatever you decide, I think we will all be able to agree that this is a billion dollar industry. Oh yeah. And that companies like Lexus, excuse me, not Lexus, Libre by Nexus Mm -hmm. are making millions of dollars hand over fist. I think we'll all be able to agree that at every step of the way, whether it's buying false passports, IDs, fake marriages, uh, recycling children, and all of the other things that you have heard that happened to migrants along the way, including rape, extortion, kidnapping, and, and this by officials from the different governments, as well as gang members, as well as cartel members. The last insult is that for those very lucky few who managed to stay in this country to await an asylum claim, there is still more bleeding. And the lawsuit that uh, was posted in PDF form by justiceforall.org against Nexus for Libre uh, kind of breaks down the reasons why uh, people feel that the organization is doing fraudulent business. I'm going to read a little bit of what they have been accused of. Um, But uh, you can hold off for that uh, off of that for 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 a moment while I read some of the introduction of the complaint. All right. Um, Plaintiffs bring this lawsuit and the plaintiffs in this case are a bunch of people, most of them from El Salvador, by the way. Um, Plaintiffs uh, are trying to recover Damages suffered as victims of a fraudulent immigration bond scheme devised by defendants Libre by Nexus. Also called Nexus Services, Inc., Nexus Services, the company's co-founder and chief operating officer, defendant Michael Donovan, and co-founder and executive vice president Richard Moore, collectively referred to in the lawsuit as Libre. This alleges that Libre's business preys on immigrants in federal detention centers who are too impoverished to pay the money bond required for their release. They attract customers by promising to get them out of immigration detention without the need of paying in full their bond in full. However, in addition to a large upfront payment, as you saw in the case of Cindy from El Salvador, that upfront payment was something like almost $3,000. Um, uh, Libre customers are fraudulently, fraudulently induced to sign documents that require them to pay exorbitant monthly fees and wear electronic GPS ankle monitors that put them in fear of perpetual surveillance. Libre then uses threats based on misrepresentations about its affiliation with federal immigration authorities to elicit payments from their customers. Although Libre tells the federal regulators that it provides immigration bond uh, securitization and GPS monitoring services, in reality, Libre operates as a middleman connecting surety insurance and bail companies with customers in need of immigration bonds. So these two gentlemen themselves are not listed Hmm. under the Treasury Department's list of certified companies that means companies accredited and uh, listed as certified acceptable companies to use by the Department of Treasury from our government and there is a long list if you want to find it you can go to fiscal.treasury.gov forward slash surety dash bonds forward slash list dash certified dash companies dot html Go and check it out. Uh, in fact, I'll drop the link here in the document that Nemo is uh, sharing from. 
And you guys can go and check out for yourself if you find any of the names of this company, Nexus Services, Nexus Inc., uh, Le- Libre by Nexus listed, and you will see, indeed, they are not a certified um, company. They're just brokers. They're just Please. like middlemen. They're, they're, they're just... They are. They're out farming farming, and, and, and getting, you know, and they're not... Oh, wow. That, that's so bizarre. But that's where the problem comes in, see, because the contracts that they're having people sign seem to... Obligate it to them. Well, they they make claims and there are veiled threats within the contract, mm-hmm. which is in English for the most part. So most people can't read what they've signed off on that implies that they're... That the agencies they're working for are the federal government Mm -hmm. and that that they're working directly with the federal government which they're not and that if the contract is broken they would that would necessitate them to be uh, detained again and put in detention which they really have no ability to claim they can do Wow. And secondly, it kind of implies that you have to wear the GPS monitor in order to gain bail, which, again, is something that is determined by the middleman company, the broker, mm. and not by the surety company itself. Wow. And that it is not a requirement either of ICE or the detention facilities for people to wear ankle bracelets in every case. But as it turns out in this complaint, Libre by Nexus makes sure by having a sham uh, assessment that they themselves created that requires every single one of their clients to sign this contract and wear an ankle bracelet, regardless of whether or not they're really a flight of risk, a flight risk. Yeah. So, um, the... Lawsuit set claims that Libre attempts to camouflage its practices by casting itself as a champion of immigration and a reuniter of families. <laughs> and isn't that what all of these con artists have been doing? The politicians, the crooked lawyers, all of these activists or mercenary activism, as I like to call it, they claim they're the ones that are protecting the migrants as they usher them through organizations like Pueblo Sin Fronteras that are working directly with the cartels, as they usher them into detention facilities, which they themselves describe as hell, to be stranded there for months and maybe years unless they can pay somebody like Libre by Nexus to get them out. But did Lolly B... Did Jake Lee, did any of these con artivists that went to Tijuana, did the did, did Nicole Ramos, did Putaya Queen, did any of the people advising these vulnerable populations traveling tell them the truth about what they would face when they reached this country? The answer is no. And of course, um, it states here that in reality, it's a scheme to trap desperate migrants to, into paying thousands of dollars, often in amounts far exceeding their bonds, and sometimes sacrificing, making them sacrifice their basic necessities to do so. In all, Libre's scheme has siphoned more than $100 million what? from some of the most vul- vulnerable immigrants and their communities since 2016. Wow. And plaintiffs, um, both are individuals who f- who were fraudulently induced and coerced into signing these agreements with Libre, and they have paid Libre thousands of dollars, some under direct threats from Libre agents that they will be rearrested by immigration authorities and sent back to immigration detention, and they bring claims to recover damages from Libre. In addition to this, and I went through this whole thing, I've shared the PDF link, uh, or Nima will be sharing that in the comments of the show. It's a long read. I think you really should read it in addition to what you just heard, which sounds horrific, right? Oh, yeah. They also charge maintenance fee, maintenance fees mm-hmm. of... You know, like fifty dollars a month. I don't know what that kind of what kind of maintenance they're doing on these GPS GPS <laughs> tracking devices. But there's also 
fees for any kind of damage mm-hmm. and repair. And if you fail to make a payment, they can charge you thousands of dollars in addition for one of the agents of these middlemen brokers to come to your place of residence or your listed place of residence to check on you for their traveling and lodging expenses that you have to pay them so they're bounty hunters, so that basically. they can check on you to make sure you didn't run away. Wow, it sounds like bounty hunters. They, they, got, a, they got a crew of bounty hunters out there too. It sounds like. But you got to uh, pay for that. Yeah, of course, of course. And, man, what? And you know, these are people that are poor. You know, they're, they're having to scratch up money from family members and wherever to be able to seek their freedom. And back to the organizations that 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 are all spawning this stuff out and capitalizing on the cash because of this. They'll use things like we're doing humanitarian efforts, we're doing these things, we're trying to help people have their basic human rights and all these things, and they ain't doing a thing about trying to reform the system to get rid of any of this stuff. They don't want it. Like I said earlier, they they don't want to because they are cashing in. They have a niche in the exploitation of these people, and it's coming and it's going to keep on coming. I mean, it's not slowing down. The deterrence of, you know, the last caravan didn't slow down the one that just left a couple days ago and ones that are going to leave at the end of the month and all the hundreds and thousands of people are going to continue through uh, Central America into Mexico and, and end up at the border of the United States and Mexico and cross the border and end up in this situation. They got a steady flow of clientele that's just keeping them rich. And $100 million in only four years? My God. Oh, I'm sure that that's, it's way more than that by now. This lawsuit has been settled and Libre by Nexus was found in they I mean basically nobody took any responsibility for any wrongdoing. Obviously both sides made a settlement agreement, but they were not found by any investigation thus far to be violating any business practices or doing anything illegal. Which is very alarming given what we see. It may not be illegal, but it certainly isn't ethical Hmm. to mislead people and to exploit the desperation of vulnerable people by the thousands in this complaint it explains that immigration bonds have to be secured by a cash deposit a cash bond Mm -hmm. or they can be guaranteed by a surety company which is certified as i said before by the u.s treasury department and that is pursuant to uh 31 U.S.C. sections 9304 through 9308. And it also says that according to um, the 8th Code of Federal Regulations, section 103.6 sub B, companies who wish to directly write federal bonds must apply to the Treasury's Bureau of Fiscal Services, which reviews the company's application and ensures that only financially sound companies licensed by a state or federal government receive the Treasury's certification. Hmm. And as of the filing of this lawsuit, neither Nexus Services nor Libre by Nexus Inc. were on the Treasury Department Circular 570. And they still aren't because I looked it up today. So... When posting, if you'll go to my first slide here, it says here that when posting an immigration bond surety company and their agent, uh, an immigration bond surety companies and their agents serve as co-obligators on the bond and they are jointly and several, severally liable. Do you know what that means? It means they're both liable. Exactly. They're jointly and severally liable for payment in the face in the face amount of the bond if the bond is breached. The the middleman, the the surety company, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they're out the money if the person doesn't show up. Okay. Right? Yep. And they're the ones liable to pay the money back. Mm-hmm. They're not not the migrant. Right. You know? And then in twenty eight, and this is really important. Look at what that says. Read it out for me, dude. It's because federal regulations do not require ICE or an immigration judge to consider a person's ability to pay money, pay a money bond. Individuals in a detention are frequently unable to obtain their release due to their, due to their high money bonds. In, mm-hmm. in the Arlington Immigration Court, where immigration cases of Virginia residents are heard, 
the median bond amount is $7,500. Moreover, bond amounts have increased dramatically in the last several years. Mm-hmm. The national median bond amount rose 50% from 2013 to 2018. Mm-hmm. My God. But there's more. The people listed as the director, the, the owners of this business, the two gentlemen, Mr. Donovan and Mr. Moore, are convicted criminals. Yes. Let's take a look at what this complaint says about them. Hmm. It says, Defendant Moore owns 39% of Nexus Services, serves as ex- executive vice president and controls much of the internal operation of the company. Evan Ajin owns 10% of Nexus Services and serves as vice president of opera- operations. Upon information and belief, both Donovan and Moore have been convicted of fraud-related felonies. Hmm. Examples, forgery, obtaining money by false pretense, attempted larceny, grand larceny, and both of them have been incarcerated. As individuals with felony convictions... Donovan and Moore are not eligible to be licensed as bail bondsmen or to serve as agents of a bail bondsman. Wow. They're not licensed and cannot be licensed, and they can't be treasury people either. Wow. Upon information and belief, defendants Moore and Donovan regularly disregarded the corporate structure of Nexus Services and Libre by Nexus for their own advantage, including taking interest-free loans from the corporation and paying personal expenses. (laughs) So, so far, we see there's trouble in paradise as far as the running of this business and who's running it. Criminals are running it. And they are open about it. In fact, they cited their time in prison as the brainchild of the business. Yeah. Because they were stuck in there and they couldn't get out. And they thought, hmm, we don't want this happening (laughs) to anybody else. Mm -hmm. So they decided they would start this business to now exploit migrants. Here's how the scam sham is described. This uh, pleading says that there's, in the contract, the, um, the surety company, the real bondsmen, yeah. are referred to as agency. They're not really saying who that is, though. Mm-hmm. And so people, if you'll put that graphic on, please, people uh, imply that the various provisions in which they use the word agency refer to governmental agency. which has an interest in the customer's compliance with that lease and that GPS monitor. And the purpose of Libre's misrepresentation that a government agency is party to the contract, which it is not, is to instill in its customers the false impression that their compliance with the terms of that contract may lead, or their lack of compliance, may lead to re-arrest, re-detention, or affect the ultimate disposition of their immigration case. By deliberately creating this false impression, Nexus Libre increases the likelihood its customers will continue to pay the monthly fees described in the fraudulent contract and thereby fill their coffers. Hmm. Libre further misleads customers by conducting what it calls, what it passes off as a quote unquote risk assessment. Libre pretends to assess on an individual basis, whether a specific customer presents a significant flight risk. Now, folks, you know, a majority of the people that are traveling in these caravans claim that they have family or have sponsors lined up in this country ready to take them in. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, if you look at what this graphic is telling you, <clears throat> is that if folks are coming here to be with family, their flight risk, and especially if they have a good asylum claim, their flight risk would be little to none. Exactly. But if you look at the fine print here, mm-hmm. there 
requiring their customers to agree to wear and lease, right, the yeah. GPS monitor, which is four hundred twenty dollars a month. Oh my god! As a condition precedent to Libre posting the bond in the first place. Hmm. In reality, Libre's crafted this so-called risk assessment so that it always produces the same results, which is the customer is always required. They're always a flight risk, so they're always going to have to rent the GPS monitor, mm -hmm. and they have to comply with the full all bells and whistles contract. Wow. So let's go to this sham risk assessment. What does it say? The sham risk assessment works like this. Libre uses what it created. Yeah, their own. Their own risk assessment instrument <clears throat> that purports to calculate the risk of danger of flight as an individual poses using a variety of demographic factors. It purports to assess the risk by assigning different point values to different ostensibly objective factors. Any customer whose circumstances implicated so many factors such that the combined point value is equal or greater to 21 points is deemed a present flight risk oh. and therefore is required to wear the GPS monitors that cost $420 a month to rent. Yep. Plus remember the activation fee is another 420 mm -hmm. up front. Jeez. But in theory, a hypothetical customer who scores less than 21 points would not have to wear the monitor and so, therefore, they would only have to pay the you know, payments toward their bond so that they can pay yeah. off their bond. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But guess what? No <laughs> customer ever gets less, less than, than 21, 21 points. points. Of course not. Because Libre ensures every single one of its customers exceeds that point total by putting in, including in their risk assessment instrument, one question that if you get it marked on your paper, equals 22 points all by itself. What? Yep, if they check that box. <laughs> Was it front Central America? Check. Right, exactly. <laughs> Libre's representatives always mark yes next to, next to that factor that is worth 22 points. So every single one of their customers is required to sign a contract and lease a GPS oh, anklet. What a scam. <laughs> So, so understand, never before, and, and people have been bonding out of detention facilities as long as detention facilities have existed, as long as people have been getting picked up by ICE or INS or whatever mm -hmm. our immigration mm -hmm. uh, apparatus was called, and for as long as that's been going on, people have been going to detention facilities, yeah. and for as long as that's been going on, people have been getting let out on bond if they can afford it. In fact, um, the most recent case that I went to translate for in Grand Forks mm -hmm. at the detention facility had to pay a $10,000 $10, bond, and it was paid by a member of their family, a U.S. citizen, okay. which you can do. Mm -hmm. If you're undocumented, you can't go pay, pay someone else's bond, and they were out within 24 hours. Hmm. So it's not required for you to go through a broker like Libre by Nexus or to go through a bail bondsman. Um, but the majority of the people that are now coming into the U.S., they don't have any means, any money with which to pay these very exorbitant bonds. Yeah. And so therefore, their almost only choice is unscrupulous companies like this one. Wow. And here are the conditions of monitoring. This hmm. is very interesting. I found it very interesting. Libre scheme, okay, it depends on the illusion that monitoring is essential to securing release huh. from the detention facility. Yeah. And that this unique feature of their services allows the detainee to post bond without having to provide collateral like a house or wow. a car okay. or something else, which you normally do to pay bail mm -hmm. bondsmen. Mm -hmm. But remember, this is a middleman. They are yeah. not the surety company. Mm -hmm. They're basically kind of masquerading as one, and they're saying, look, you don't have to give us a car or a house. Um, we're going to put this 
ankle monitor on you, and that takes care of all of that. Yeah, you're just going to pay all you gotta $20, do is rent $20 a it. month. Yeah, <clears throat> and you're good. Let me tell you a story. As I've told you, I have worked with immigrant populations and immigration lawyers. I was formerly a paralegal. That's my formal training. And I still do, and I still translate. And, and so do members of my family. And I hear horror stories every day. The reason that this exploitation and this abuse angers me so much is because it is just bleeding people dry. And many of you out there may be angry that these people coming from third world countries came here, were fooled, were dumb enough to believe these groups were you brazen enough to bring their children or do whatever it took to try to get into this country. But as a person that wants to seek out the truth, as, um, as somebody that has worked in the legal system, I don't think one wrong merits another wrong. I don't think that they should be exploited. And I don't think that it's fair that companies like this and crooked lawyers groups would breathe hope into desperate, vulnerable people only so they can milk them like cows. Yeah, And that's exactly what is happening. The people that have been here waiting they're in a hamster wheel mm -hmm. that they will inevitably tumble out of because most of them, if they can find work, cannot find work. Now, remember, many of the people that are released from detention facilities are not issued a work permit for months and months, sometimes even a year. It can take a long time and it costs money and an immigration attorney to file the paperwork to get a work permit mm -hmm. while you wait for your asylum claim. So that in and of itself is a difficult prospect. But if you're issued one, and if you can find a job, you're not going to make enough money to pay your rent, pay your, you know, the Inc basic Inc necessities Inc of life, plus your monthly $420 mm -hmm. a month, mm -hmm. and all of these other types of fees that they tack on if you miss a payment, if you're late for a payment. Yeah. If you're late for a payment here, they're going to send an agent out to your house and it could cost you an additional $1,200 just for missing a late payment with the constant threat that if you don't make your payments on time, if you don't answer that call when they call to check on you, they will send you back to the detention facility, that they will call ICE the claims that are made in this lawsuit against Libre by Nexus are echoed in the stories I have heard from members of my family that I have heard myself from people that are in these situations that are wondering whether they would, were, were going to be able to afford to buy groceries to feed themselves and their children this month or whether or not they're going to pay for this damn ankle bracelet mm -hmm. instead. Because the truth is, they have to choose the ankle bracelet over the food. Does they have to mm -hmm. choose the ankle bracelet over medicine, over anything they need. They have to choose the ankle bracelet because they are told. My, my mother has told me how people have called her crying in desperation. In one case, a woman couldn't afford to pay her telephone contract her okay. cell phone contract <clears throat> because of the costs of the ankle bracelet so she wasn't able to take the call when they called her to make sure that she was you know where she's mm -hmm. supposed to be and okay. then they called to threaten to send her back call ice and mm -hmm. send her back to detention and eventually many of these folks they fall out of that hamster wheel because they can't keep making those monthly payments. They can't make enough money to support themselves and keep that ankle bracelet on and meet the contract requirements and the late fees and mm -hmm. the maintenance fees and all the other mm -hmm. fees that get tacked on and they quit. Yeah. 
and they end up getting deported. And the saddest cases of all are the ones that keep and keep and keep and keep on paying until their asylum claim comes up for hearing, and then they find out they don't qualify. Yep. And they get deported. Anyway. Yeah. And all these other people got rich, they're getting rich over their misery for something that they're actually not going to achieve. Wow. Exactly. So, uh, did we finish uh, reading the the, uh, requirements there? The original contract contains a page that is titled Conditions of Monitoring, which warns customers that the failure to meet program conditions may result in program participation revocation and that may and that your bond may be revoked and that you may be remanded to the custody of the jurisdiction wherein you face charges in the above federal case that statement in the contract that most of these people sign that they don't even understand because mm-hmm. it's not in spanish yep only 3 pages of this 20 plus page contract are in spanish and it is poorly translated Mm-hmm. So folks are signing contracts they don't understand, which they don't necessarily need because they're not all fright, flight risks, except for the fact that Libre by Nexus assesses them as such so that yep. they can make all of their customers um, required mm-hmm. to wear GPS devices. And they lie to them about their ability to remand these folks back to the custody of detention. That's a lie. Libre has no relationship whatsoever with the federal government and they have no authority to revoke or remand anyone's any person into custody period. Wow. Failure to pay Libre or adhere in any way to their contractual terms or their program conditions, quote unquote, has no bearing on the person's immigration case, their immigration bond or their ability to remain out on bond while awaiting their hearing. None whatsoever. Similarly, Libre's contract documents contain almost no mention of the consequences of the customer for defaulting on their payments. But the clear implication is that Libre will cause them to be redetained if they do not pay. In fact, many people in this lawsuit allege that they were threatened by agents of Libre by Nexus with exactly that. Hmm. So they are being targeted and they are being exploited. Now, if we take a look at the Nexus Libre section on language, you will find that the original contract is 22 pages, 20 of which are in English. Excuse me, only two pages are in Spanish. All right. The document contains the vast majority of the contract terms in English, the English Mm -hmm. part does, including payment requirements, terms of contract, purported grant of consent consent by um, the immigrant to be tracked by this monitoring device, purported promissory note that takes effect if the immigrant bond is forfeited, and the forum selection clause. And one of the two or two of the pages are translated into Spanish, which is deceptive and misleading the pages have been poorly translated from english to spanish and the resulting language is confusing and misleading and in addition the spanish language pages fail to convey all of the essential terms of the agreement including the amount of the required monthly lease payment so most people think that or don't understand that they're leasing the ankle bracelet that they have to wear. Hmm. A lot of this and the allegations that are found within this lawsuit are, have been made before in a, an, an article in the Washington blade, the, um, backstory of this company is told Um, the Virginia company offers reward for exposing racist homophobic politicians. This is covering the LGBTQ community. Is this the Washington blade? Yep. And uh, this, this is, um, an article in which they, uh, explain that Nexus services is owned by gay businessman, Mike Donovan. 
and that they were offering a reward of between $500 and $5,000 for anyone who could give him information about Virginia elected officials who engaged in racist, sexist, or homophobic behavior. And this other article on DNR Online, they give more background about the business that these two gentlemen are involved in. In it, they talk about how Nexus is making millions. And there uh, at the very top, you have a picture of the uh, chief executive and co-founder of Nexus, Libre by Nexus, Mike Donovan. This is Mr. Mike Donovan. Take a good look at him because I'm going to uh, show you another picture of him at his nuptials here. Hmm. So I want you to remember what he looks like. All right. There he is in a mock courtroom hmm. talking about how much help he has given to more than 350,000 undocumented immigrants. Wow. And, you know, they um, are pretty proud of their business model. Um, people are willing to do anything in order to get out of these detention facilities and in order to avoid being returned to their countries. Michael Donovan has disputed allegations by his former clients that, you know, he has been uh, fraudulent or that he's pressured people to sign contracts they didn't understand. And he denies clients were threatened by this company. He says they have never returned anyone to immigration and customs enforcement for failing to pay. Yes, because they can't. <laughs> Just like the lawsuit alleges, they can't do it. But that wow. doesn't mean they don't threaten yeah. people. It doesn't mean that they don't imply that they could if they wanted to yep. in order to keep people compliant. Mm -hmm. And of course, they always say they, they care about their clients. They care about their clients. Here's one of the reasons this company is being called out. Uh, there is a man uh, that is mentioned in here that used their services by the name of Flores, and he turned it to this company, um, whose name, of course, means free. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Libre means free. Mm -hmm. If that's not a misleading uh, yeah. title for a company, <laughs> I don't know what is. Definitely. Free by mm -hmm. Nexus, mm -hmm. with the hope of joining his wife in Los Angeles. He ended up bonding out $7,500, but he had no money. He contact, his wife contacted a uh, bail's bondsman company, but they required collateral, which she mm -hmm. didn't have, a car, a house. So they went to Libre. His wife called the company and paid $2,170, which was 20% of the bond, bond plus okay. the fees. And two, day later, <clears throat> two days later, he was free. Um, the man drove Flores to a McDonald's and bought him a Big Mac and a smoothie the agent from Libre by Nexus, mm -hmm. and afterward drove him to a bus station to be reunited with his family. The Libre employee then parked in an empty lot, handed him a packet of documents in English that he couldn't read, and told him to sign the papers, mm -hmm. the contract, uh, which we've been talking about that was listed in the lawsuit, yeah. and, then gave, and then asked him, where do you want me to put it? To which... The man Flores asked, what? And the man responded, the bracelet. Oh, yeah. Which made him think it was like an actual mm -hmm. bracelet. bracelet that yeah. he was going to wear, yeah. you know? So he handed him his <laughs> wrist and was like, well, I guess put it on my wrist. Uh -huh. And the man responded, I don't think you want me to put it on your wrist. You don't want to walk around with this. And he took out the it's giant. The giant. For, you know. GPS monitor that's mm -hmm. about the size of a pack of cigarettes, you know, mm -hmm. and um, put it on his ankle. Yeah. And of course, you know, the price of that rental for the device is $420 a month. A month. The money that they were going to be paying back 
to Libre by Nexus in the minds of this family was to go toward the rest of the bond. Mm -hmm. But instead, the monthly fees they were paying were for the bracelet. Never for the bond. So they continually have to owe for that bond. So they're they're in, in, in indebted to them for the bond continually. Yeah, and very few co- few companies have made out as well as Libre by Nexus. Of course not. With the unprecedented backlog of mm-hmm. you know over half a million cases, and then of course you know have these caravans fueling that fire. So tens of thousands of people have had to go this route. Wow. Of these brokers. There are a lot of allegations within these lawsuits and this article um, about the way uh, that they do business, which, by the way, um, they have over 6,000 current clients, according to this article. Hmm. Um, uh, And this was only a year after they had started their company. Wow. And they uh, had... 200 employees and nearly 30 offices, including offices in El Salvador. Huh. Mm Mm-hmm. They boast of a revenue, yearly revenue of over $30 million. And they keep opening up new ventures like home rentals, drug and alcohol treatments, um, legal counseling, and work placement. Oh, my God. Donovan founded the company four years ago with his partner and husband Richard Moore they ended up getting married folks here's a picture of their nuptials from Mr. Moore's Instagram account okay black and white classic Mm -hmm. Donovan pointed to a mound of dirt where he's planning a 19 million dollar expansion including a museum of the American detained immigrant really yes (laughs) Yes. <laughs> uh, he isn't worried that the business could be adversely affected uh, by the bad press, by the lawsuits, or by this Trump administration. In fact, I think that they're cashing in on this to the nth degree. He said, what we're going to end up with is internment camps along our southern border. Hmm. Sound familiar? Yep. People wasting away in these internment camps. And I know that we are the only hope that a significant number of those people will have. So I've got to figure out a way to grow our business to serve more of them. Hmm. He was saying this in March of 2017. Before any camps at the border had ever existed. Mm -hmm. Do you think these people have an agenda now? Oh, yeah. How could he describe exactly what we're seeing in Matamoros, in Tijuana, in, in other border cities, these tent cities? Mm-hmm. How could we have known that they were going to be calling them concentration camps, like wow. this man is referring? What are mm-hmm. your thoughts on this, dude? Well, it, it reminds me of a lot of the stuff is in the plans for a long time. Mm-hmm. You know, we discovered that with Standing Rock. You know, there was plans to do that years before it actually happened. You know, so if people are getting in on the early deals on this sort of stuff, I wouldn't be surprised if these guys actually invested in tents, a tent Ooh, company or something. I agree. Because there's so many tents that have went to Mexico and Central America for these these um, these um camps. You know, and, and I, I, I'm, I was in Mexico, tried to buy some camping gear once, and it was hard to come by and for that many tents. So I, I think these people have been planning for a long time, and they have enough money and influence that they actually put people in place and started this whole thing. That's what I think. Donovan said that they both turned their life around after they were incarcerated. But a decade later, he and Mo- both uh, Moore, his husband, were de- mm-hmm. who both of, uh, who declined to be interviewed for the story. Donovan spoke to them, but yeah. his husband wouldn't. Were again accused of financial crimes. Hmm. In 2009, they volunteered for Democrat Mike Signer's uh, unsuccessful primary campaign in Virginia for lieutenant governor, and they rented rooms and office space under assumed names at the Williamsburg Hotel and mm. then skipped out on the $25,000 bill. Wow. I they did that. allegedly uh, did the same thing in at least two other counties, according wow. to police records. These are just the kinds of things that folks running this company <laughs> are willing to do. In addition to those allegations, 
their um, ankle bracelets have been found to start on fire oh my God. and have electrical <laughs> electrocution. Yes, Burn one people. woman suffered very severe burns. And when this happened, an agent came and picked... She didn't go to a hospital in mm-hmm. an ambulance. A Libre by Nexus agent came and took her to the hospital and promptly had her sign forms that... Made them not liable. Exactly. Wow. That said that she would not sue them for the extensive burn injuries that she suffered. Wow. As a result. I mean, I'm just giving you examples <laughs> here. Of what oh they're willing, what what these what these folks have been accused of doing, so you get an idea, because it's not just the you know the sham, mm-hmm. not just the scam type sham. of contracts. Mm-hmm. It's the additional fees. It's the faulty equipment. It's their f- sham assessment test mm-hmm. that they created. It's it's the whole thing, and you know it made me. It made me a little curious to look more into uh, who these guys are. What makes yeah. them tick? Yeah. So I, I dug a little bit deeper mm-hmm. into um, the husband's page, Richard Moore. Here's his Twitter account. He calls himself a serial entrepreneur, parent, and advisor to Dog the Bounty Hunter. Oh, really? <laughs> That's Dwayne Chapman. You know, mm-hmm. the guy that... Uh, basically goes on television and mm-hmm. finds people that yeah. uh, jump their bail, is he said, I can be a jerk sometimes. Hmm. And then he advises people to watch Dogs Most Wanted Wednesday nights on WGN America. <laughs> oh, my God. But he is, apparently, he can't make this stuff up, yeah. pretty close friends with Dog the Bounty Hunter. For real? Here's a picture of him with Dog the Bounty Hunter. <laughs> One of many you can find on oh his Instagram account at whatever that is, Renneva777. Seven, seven, seven. Yep. And here's another picture with Dog the Bounty Hunter. Wow. There's a bunch of them. Like mm-hmm. the guy's practically with them at all times. And behind him is one of his sons. I think maybe both of his sons are in this picture. Hmm. Moore uh, and Richard Moore um, has gear to try to mimic Dog the Bounty Hunter Uh. (laughs) in this picture, including a hatchet. I don't know why he needs that hatchet. It's in the contract. He can chop people up. Remember, this guy is not a bail bondsman. Yeah. He is not. He's a convicted felon. Yeah. But he seems to have on gear, which includes a hatchet yeah. and what looks like a taser. Yeah. Oh, my God. And um, Dog the Bounty Hunter's Instagram account comments there. Did you see that? It says badass. Oh. That's Dog the Bounty Hunter's account on Instagram. Wow. So, yeah, I see that. yeah. <clears throat> so lastly, I wanted you to hear this YouTube video where uh, Donovan defends himself from allegations by one of the people that sued him back in the day. Again, these lawsuits have been resolved now, mm-hmm. but listen to the, you know, read between the lines. All right. Let's listen. I'm Mike Donovan, president of Nexus Services and Libre by Nexus. This is Simon Sandoval Moshenberg with the Legal Aid Justice Center. In the most dire and desperate times for immigrants that this country has ever experienced, Simon recently decided to attack Libre by Nexus, a company exclusively dedicated to helping immigrants get out of detention, navigate challenging legal waters, and defend their inherent rights. Sometimes the things Simon says just plain don't make sense. Funny enough, even Simon seems to agree. Don't just take my word for it. For example, in his lawsuit, Simon says Nexus is a company that operates illegally. But in a recording obtained by Nexus, Simon also says, Well, both are bad for poor people, 
and both are generally legal in most states. Nexus has helped reunite over 30,000 families across the United States. Yet rather than applaud our efforts or find an alternative solution, Simon pursues illogical and inconsistent lines of legal attack. Simon says the GPS devices used by Nexus are inhumane. But Simon also says... A lot of the advocates I talk to think that this is just horrible. I have somewhat of a different take on it. I, I think that a consumer can consent to GPS tracking. Simon says Nexus collaborates with ICE when nothing could be further from the truth. But even Simon seems to acknowledge that because he also said this. The great by Nexus does not have a back channel to ICE. Simon says Nexus has contracts which are unclear and positions the company as a bail bondsman. But Simon also says this. Libre by Nexus is not a bail bonding company. No, I agree. We're not a bail bond company. I also don't think he should lie in a pleading to court. In addition to his penchant for appearing to lie in court documents, Simon has a knack for making ridiculous claims. For example, Simon says this. You have to pay the $420 a month until you die. What? That's false fear-mongering, and it's ridiculous. The average Nexus client makes no more than eight payments, and our contracts have set terms with a specific number of payments that are required. In reference to immigrants, Simon says this. The prospect of getting sued in civil court for breach of contract is really not high on their list of concerns. <laughs> I disagree. But honestly, that is so typical of an answer for a white liberal. I believe Simon doesn't care about these clients, any of them, or any other immigrant. He only cares about himself and any media outlet that he can get to pay attention to him. Simon also says this. Even if uh, your strategy there is ultimately unsuccessful and the person is redetained, you can use this as an opportunity to reduce the bond to something affordable. And, shockingly, he says this. I've seen people use GoFundMe to try to raise money for immigration bonds. Does he think these are college kids at a spring break? These are moms and dads with kids who need their parents at home. They can't just chill for seven days while Simon files a bond motion. Without the help of Nexus, 100% of these people would be languishing behind bars. You know, Simon and Donald Trump seem to have a lot in common. Neither of them seem to care about whether immigrants get thrown in dangerous detention centers and both seem much more concerned about their own media popularity than the desperate immigrants fleeing violence who are desperately trying to make America home. Maybe Simon should spend seven days in a detention center. I don't think he lasts seven hours. And that's why I think it's particularly disgusting that he doesn't care if more immigrants are jailed by Trump's deportation machine. Simon and the legal aid firm he represents do not understand one fundamental issue. There is literally no other option for these immigrants who are in crisis. Their efforts would lead to the detention of tens of thousands of people and make it impossible for most immigrants to even get out of jail. They'd rather immigrants suffer and taxpayers foot the bill. Nexus stands ready to fight back against reckless attorneys who do not understand the terrible impact that their actions may have on desperate immigrants. We will wage war against those who would harm immigrants in this country. And as always, Nexus stands where injustice meets its match. <laughs> okay, so let's address some of the things that he said in there. Michael Hair Hat Donovan mm -hmm. tells us that Simon said that people can, cons you know, he contradicted himself and that people can consent to GPS. And, and then, he, then he basically says that it's unethical uh, the way that they're doing it. Well, both can be true, especially yeah. when, as we have read in the pl complaint, the majority of the contract is in English and people cannot consent to what they don't understand. Mm -hmm. I studied contract law. Yeah. You know what the first rule of contract law is? If you don't read and don't understand the contract and you sign it, you didn't consent. Mm -hmm. You can't consent to something you don't understand. Okay? Second, he says that the company is basically presenting itself as a bail bondsman and that they're not a bail bondsman. 
Again, both can be true. Yep. These are convicted felons that mm -hmm. can't become a surety company mm -hmm. under the Treasury Department. And they also don't have any direct relationship to any of the federal agencies that detain people. So therefore, they can't make implied or veiled threats that they will remand people into custody when they have no such power. And then they talk about the fact that uh, people pay for GPS monitoring. Um, frankly, if you aren't really a flight risk, which many of these folks might not be, then guess what? They wouldn't have to enter into a contract to be monitored by GPS. Most people that were released pending a hearing with immigration for asylum claims and other things didn't get put in a GPS monitor. Mm -hmm. They were just bonded out and told to return to their hearing date. Yep. And the majority of people did. But the fact is that these people, 100% of the clients of Libre by Nexus are forced into a contract. He then goes on to say that the person that doesn't care for the migrants and wishes to see them in our President Donald J. Trump's deportation machine mm -hmm. is Simon and not him. Yeah. When he's the one making millions and millions of dollars off of bonding them out. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was really disgusting that he invoked our president's name yeah. in order to deflect from the fact that he and his partner are exploiting vulnerable migrants to the tune of millions of dollars mm -hmm. in what appears to me to be in a very unethical way. Yep. So, folks, that's all I have for you tonight. I hope that we learned a lot about one of the many ways that the migrant populations that are coming in mass in these caravans are being bled dry by one of the many uh, people along mm -hmm. their route that they encounter that want money from them. Yep. If it's not the smugglers, it's the crooked lawyers, mm -hmm. the gang members, the cartels, right? And finally, Libre by Nexus the brokers, the middlemen who take your money in exchange for temporary freedom. Yeah. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to uh, Cindy Gomez Shemp. And Duke Gomez Shemp. On a Mexican Crossing Lines. Here on 88.1 FM, KPPPLP Fargo Moorhead, where we are adding local color to your airwaves. Have a great evening. Good night, everybody.